So today we are going to talk about two things. Um, first thing we are going to talk about will be um, functions that return value. For now, the very first thing we learned is that we can package stuff, put it in a function, and just call the function as is, right? And uh, um, then uh, we learned about functions that receive arguments, that you can actually put values, give something to functions, so the function has something to start with. Uh, that was what Chart 2 is all about, I think, right? If I recall correctly. And today we are going to talk about functions that can actually return stuff. And what does it mean is that when a function is called and it's done and over with, you can actually make it lay an egg and go. <laughs> so you can actually pick up the egg and do something with it. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to learn about, uh, first of all, how a function returns a value. We're going to learn how to do that. And see for a fact that scanf and printf actually return values, that we can actually use them to see what the user is doing. When we talked about point, uh, when we talked about uh, functions, let me just uh, uh, take a look at. That's not ours. It's OP two four four. I still don't know how to make Visual Studio open the current folder. It always opens the last one. So we went through loops and stuff like that function receiving value. So we, we did something like this. So when we wrote functions, we learned that we can actually give functions something so they can have some seed to begin their work with or to do something with it. And uh, we said that um, when we are dealing with functions in, or any program, we would say functions in, in C language, um, we need to understand two points of entry and two points of exit. When I say two points of entry is that a function can receive two different types of things, values from other functions or values from outside world. That's the two different things are. So when we said whenever a function, we say a function receives something, it means one function is providing a value to another function. When we say one function is getting something from user, it's usually scanf or get care involved. There is nothing being received. It has nothing to do with the function, what the function receives. Same thing with returning a function, uh, values from functions. If we, we're going to look at it today, and we'll find out when you say this function returns something, it means the function gives back to the caller function something to use. Or you can say this function prints something. It has nothing to do with what it returns. It's what it's displaying on a screen. So we have to understand this. Functions receive and return values from other functions and to other functions. And functions scan and print stuff from outside world and to outside world. We're OK with this. Yes? My mic is on. And It is recording. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate that, by the way. Yeah. So, and the light is not blinking, which means I still have battery. So if you see this thing is blinking over here, let me know. It means I have to change the battery. <laughs> if you see this red dot, it's blinking. All right. So let's write a program. And PRG.C. Somebody asked me what PRG stands for in the chat. I don't know who, who the person was. It was kind of funny. That means program. I, just, I, I write PRG because I'm in a program that I'm writing. Okay. There's nothing special. OK. So we include a standard input output header file. And uh, uh, int main 
boy. And we return 0. That's the very first thing that you have seen. So when you write int main, main is actually returning something. Where does that with 0 go to? We talked about it. Who receives that 0? That main is returning? The operating system, the program, the, the, um, the main, like if you are on a Mac, the, it's iOS. If you are on uh, a PC, it's either Linux or it's Windows. It literally returns it to that one. Um, and um, that's a big thing that we're going to talk about later. So you're essentially sending a message to the operating system, how did my program end? Usually when you say zero, it doesn't mean true or false, it's just the code. When you're returning zero, usually it means there is no error, there is no uh, code that I want to convey. But if you put 152, that usually means a message 152 was sent. And then you have to open the manual and see what is 152, the manual that you are going to write for your client, which we are not going to go through. But let's write a, a function that actually returns something. So I'm going to say int returns 100. And in here, I'm going to say return 100. The most stupid function you can write. I'm going to write the prototype for it. And I'm going to say int a. And I'm going to say a is set to returns 100. And guess what? That returns 100. And oh, that returns 100. And if I say print of percent D and new line, and I show A, 100 is returned. So if I run, call this program, it's a very um, funny program to write, does nothing special. Um, it, when the function is called, it goes over here, and at the end, it returns 100. So 100 goes back, and A that has garbage in it, actually it's 304, but whatever, it's garbage, it will be overwritten by that, and it's going to become 100. And that's what you will see over here that is 100. OK? So that's how you return stuff with a function. OK? Functions can return values. Are we OK with this? Are we OK down to this point? For example, so. Um, I'm going to call it a funks that return. For example, if your purpose is to receive an integer, from the, if your purpose is to receive an integer from the user, you can actually write a function called get int. So what do I do? I'm going to, so this thing I'm going to remove, I'm going to call it int, get int. So instead of writing scanf this and that, I'll do this. In here, I'm going to say int value. And at the end, I'm going to say return value. So it's going to return that value. And all I need to do is to write scanf percent d and address of value. So this function essentially receives an integer from user and returns it to my program. So now in my program, I can have integer a, and I can say printf. Enter an integer. And in here, I'm going to say a is set to get int. So I'm not going to write an integer. And printf, uh, um, you entered percent d in new line and a. OK? So there's no magic in here on it. You'll know what's going to happen. So let me just. 
what's going on? There you go. Let me just run it. So when I run it, builders, seriously? Oh, because uh, Scanf has that schmiggly dinghy, let me just do that. Uh, output. And I have to remove that one and put the prototype. I forgot to put the prototype too. Like I made, I wrote three lines of program and I had five mistakes in it. Imagine how many mistakes are you all going to make when you're doing stuff. So, <laughs> okay, that's very normal. And also, I need to have a prototype for that. So in here, I'm going to say int, get int, and I'm just introducing it to main. And now, if I run the program. Again, really? Uh, line seven. Let me see what's going on. <laughs> Give me line number. I'm blind. Line seven. Oh. Printf. All right, there you go. Enter an integer, I'll put over here one, two, three, four, and it says you entered one, two, three, four. Walking through it step by step works as follows. So walking through it step by step, it comes over here, says print an integer, goes to the get int function. In get int function, it has a value of garbage in, 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 in that integer, receives that value from the the user, user enters one, two, three. Value is set to one, two, three. Then that value is returned back to main. So A that has 615 in it will be overwritten by one, two, three from get int and will be displayed. Are we okay with this? Any problems with this? Are we all good? All right. So that's, that's that, and we're going to use that a lot. So we're going to write functions that return values then, okay? And um, take a look at this. For example, like the functions that return values, let me just uh, explain over here again. So in here, I'm going to go to b uh, functs that return uh, something. Now, take a look at this. I just want to show you something that we're going to use soon. So forget about this get in thingy, just to show you that all functions return something. Now, in here, I'm going to say printf, hello, my name is Fardat. And I'll go to new line, OK? And I'm going to say A is set to printf. Now, printf happens to return an integer. OK? It might be something else, but I'm just letting you know printf returns an integer. And what is that print? What is the value that is returning? Take a look. So in here, I'm going to say printf returned. And let's run it. Oh, <laughs> I modified the wrong file. Sorry. Copy. That's my get int, hopefully without any error. Yeah, so compiling it one more time and run it. And as you will see that, it returned 26. What do you think that 26 is? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 25 down to here. And a new line, 26. So total of 26 characters were printed over there. Got it? Easy breezy, right? Any questions on that? No, you could easily. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did it without it. So <laughs> but yeah, it had, we have. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Anyway, so there is always a way out, always. So that's that one. So what does printf return? The number of characters it's printing. So if I do something like this, printf percent %d and a, that's a, that's a cool walkthrough. Uh, let me just, no, no, let me, let me not, not write it here. Let me just do something. Let me just save it as, as what it was. Okay, so in, in here I'm going to say mm, returns, printf returns the number of characters printed. And to, to be precise about it, I'm going to do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm printing 9 and a new line. And when I compile and run it, obviously it's going to return 10. Because it's 9 characters and a new line total of 10. Are we all OK with this? OK. So having done that, This is what I'm going to do. Take a look. Print. If I told you, what is the output? Let's, let's, yeah. What is the output of the following program? What would you say? Think. You want to walk through it? How do, how do we walk through? OK, this is an important moment of your life. I'm giving you a secret on how to walk through an application and get the correct answer. First, before you start doing walkthrough, doing walkthrough, you turn off your intelligence. You become dumb as a doorknob, because that's what the computer is. You completely turn off your intelligence and just follow instructions. OK? What is line number five do? Line number five, five has two stages. A becomes 123, correct? So A becomes 123. I wish I could actually show that on the thing, but I can't. Um, but anyways, so A becomes 123, correct? That's what happens, right? What does line number five do? Line number five has two stages because it's an assignment. It means you have two lines. First, you have to do the right side. Then you have to do the left side. What does the right side do? Oh, sorry. For, for me, it's very difficult from this angle to see which one is what. Five, the line that has printf in it, is that six? OK, six. Seriously, it's very difficult to see which one is what from here, uh, from this angle. So, so line number, oh yeah, five was eight. In line number five, A became two, uh, one, two, three. And line number six, we're going to have output over here. Line number six has two parts, an assignment as right side and left side. So first, we do the right side that is printf. So what does the right side of the assignment do? Print what? So output is 1, 2, 3. N and what does printf return? The number of characters printed. How many characters were printed? Three. So 3 goes to 
A. So A becomes 3. That's line 6, correct? Right? Now we come to line 7. What does it print? First a dash, then 3, and then goes to new line. So this is a perfect answer. If you, get, if you do that, you get the full mark. Okay? So it gets 1, 2, 3, dash 3. That's a perfect walkthrough. Yes? Why not? Don't you see a printf percent D? Again, turn off your intelligence. You expected that. But if you're a computer, you see printf, your job is to print. And the rights of this is very important. If you guess, believe me, it's wrong. Follow instructions. I have an assignment. I do the right side first. Be done with it. Then I do the left side. Right side set says print one, two, three, and return the number of characters. Prints one, two, three, returns three. Now I have a three that is supposed to be assigned. What is the variable? A, so A becomes three, and so on so forth. But thank you for the question. That was perfect. Okay? You know what's going to be interesting? If I run it and it doesn't happen. <laughs> so one, two, three, and it goes to the roof. Are we okay with this? All right. So now we know what printf is. So if I told you, now that's difficult. Forget about it. Never mind. Okay, so. Um, now, what does scanf return? That's a cool one. What does scanf return? So if I say printf enter. And int a double and a character. Space separated. And in here, I'm going to say a is equal to scanf percent d percent lf and percent c. And in here, I'm going to put. Address of A, address of D, and address of CH, correct? And in here, I'm going to put 100. In here, I'm going to put, there's a reason for that, 100.123. And in here, I'm going to say X. And in here, I'm going to say printf. printf, scanf returned, returned a, and the values entered, uh, so return percent d, and then I'm going to have printf int is percent d, a double is percent point three LF and character is percent C and I'm gonna go to new line and I'm gonna put over here A D and C H. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? So first let's run it and see what happens. So Space separated. So I'm going to put 100. Uh, I'm going to put 10, 1.234, and A. And I hit enter. Scanf returned what? 
3. So 3 scatf is telling you, I have done 3 successful reads. So the number of percents you have in scanf's format specifier is the maximum number scanf can return, not more than that. Do we understand that? And the rest, how can it return less? We'll see. So that's that one. Okay, now do you see that, right? And let's actually have the values before and after. So in here I'm going to have So let's do it one more time. Now I'm going to write it again. So these are the values that I have, right? Now I'm going to enter these values. I'm going to enter 10, C, and 123.345. What did I do? I entered an integer. What did I enter for double? C. Is C a double? Scanf can't read it. Correct? So this is what happens. Scanf returned one. It means I could only read one of the things that you gave me. The rest, I could not. So with that, you can detect exactly how many things Scanf reads. So Scanf reads either, returns either the number of successful reads, number of percents that you have, Zero means nothing was read. The very first one failed. Okay? With this one, it is impossible not to have three after two. There is no way that I can fail because anything is a character. You follow? Anything is a character unless, see, let's do it like this. I'm going to run it and show it to you. So in here, I'm going to say, if I do this, if I... Um, What happened? So in here, I'm going to say 10. Uh, and in here, I'm going to put some garbage like that. And I hit enter. What does it get? Semicolon. So no matter what, that percent C is going to pick something. You follow? So it is impossible for that C because anything is a character. So that's almost impossible. Okay, another thing that I have to mention. When you are writing scanf like this, scanf might return you minus one. You know what is minus one? The keyboard is broken. I could not even read from anything. It's not that I could, some, but something was entered and I could not read it. It's like the reading device was broken. So minus one is disaster. That never, you're never going to see that, ever. OK? You will at the end of the semester. No, no. We're going to demonstrate something. We're going to tell you how to read from files. So when a file is not on the hard drive and you try to read from it, that's when scanf returns minus one. It says, what the heck? You told me to read from something and it's not there. So minus one, that's the case, OK? Um, Zero means I just couldn't read. Everything's good, but I couldn't read. The, the information that was sent was incorrect. And uh, uh, more than zero, it's the number of possible reads. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do in here, so this is, again, <clears throat> we are just talking more about scanf. CDE dot <clears throat> what scanf returns. So now I'm going to do this. Take a look. I'm going to say comma and comma. <clears throat> and in here, I'm going to say enter int, double and a character, comma separated. OK, now take a look. <clears throat> so.
So I put 10, comma, 20, comma, and 8. And I hit enter. <clears throat> it reads 3, 20, and 8. Are we okay with this? <clears throat> Let me just do something in here just a second. Okay, anyways, so uh, comma separate. So in here, I'm going to put 10, 20, 20, and A. And I hit enter. It reads 1. Because what scanf does, if you don't put a percent, you put anything else, you are telling to scanf, match those and skip them. If you don't, if you have comma over there, user has to enter comma. If there is no comma, Scarf says, I didn't see it. You told me I'm going to expect a comma here and throw it away. I couldn't. So now if I enter it like this, now it's going to return two because it needs to skip a comma and read the character. There is no comma, therefore the third one fails. So remember, scanf, when you just put a percent, fine. You're just reading one thing, and it wants that, and space is the delimiter for it, and everything is good, uh, and all the leading spaces will be skipped, no problem, it will read it. But if you put anything else around it, around that percent, those things have to be there for scanf to be able to successful. So if you want user enter greater than a number, you have to say scanf greater percent %d. If user don't put that greater in the entry, scanf will say, I didn't get the entry thing. I'm not going to read it. Got it? And that helps us actually to see if user is entering something properly or not, if user is actually entering something properly or not, which brings us to decision making, which we didn't talk about. It. We talked about repetition. We know how to repeat something based on a condition, but we can actually make decisions based on a condition. Very simple. So this one is what, oh, EF, what scanf returns and how it works, dot CPP. All right? Decision making. Decision making happens with compilers, uh, with, uh, with, uh, happens with conditions, exactly as, as you, uh, you would suspect. And it's done using an if statement. So for example, in here I'm going to say printf, uh, enter a number. Okay? And I, I read a number, so I have integer number. And I'm going to say scanf percent %d address of number. And then I'm going to say if. And you put a condition in front of it. I want to see if this number is positive or negative or 0. OK? For now, we're going to do positive and negative. Is 0 positive or negative, mathematicians? Negative? You think so? No, it's positive, but forget about it. Let's, let's just assume that 0 is positive at the moment. We'll fix it in two seconds, OK? So I'm going to say if that number, now you can write the expressions you learned, greater than or equal to 0, 
printf, the number is positive. <clears throat> otherwise, otherwise in C++ is else. Else, printf, the number is negative. I don't know why it's uh, exclamation mark over this. Very surprising. <laughs> the number is negative, but anyways. So that's what it is. So that condition becomes true or false based on what we have. So when we are actually running this program, this is how if statement works. So we're going to get a number. So let's say I put over here uh, 100, and you hit enter. <clears throat> Having this, OK. That was, that was strange. I'm, I'm telling you, like, this computer is acting strange. Anyways, so it's, so it's 100. It's 100 greater than 0. If we put it like that, the result is true, correct? Because it's true, the first part happens. Therefore, it comes here and says it's positive, And it completely skips the else part and, whoop, jumps over it. Right? You see that? So now in here, I can actually have, like, something like, uh, I can have something like printf done. Just to show what happens. So now, if I do it like this, and I'll come over here and I get a number, this time I'm going to put minus 150. And minus 150 is less than 0, therefore, it's false. Because it's false, the else part happens, and completely the true part is ignored. And therefore, the number is negative and done. Are we OK with this? All right. So, and <clears throat> so in here, it's got to be, didn't I put an F, and I said what scanf returns and how it works two seconds ago? Oh, I did it CPP. OK, I'll fix it. Thank you. Please let me know if I'm doing CPP. That's uh, of, of old habits start die hard. So this one is going to be GEFG. I'm going to fix that. <clears throat> this is uh, uh, if statement. All right, let me fix that. So yes, so this is called uh, an if statement that is nested. So what we have done was we actually uh, uh, put an if statement in the first part of the if that was the positive part, because that was still decisions to be make, made in, uh, let me just see if I can get a line number over here, line number 9 to 14, we inserted another if statement in the true part of the if that decides if the number is 0 or it's not. And uh, we call that a nested if. So this nested if that we have, um, I'm going to write it in another way that you will see C programmers do. And it's very, 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 very usual. OK? So in here, I'm going to call it EFGH. That's a nested if. Oh, CPP again. All right, uh, I'll rename it. <laughs> Sorry. OK, so that is, so what is true in C language? Anyone? What is true in C language? No. 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 Why were you saying one? I keep saying no, and people say one. Pardon me? 2% to midterm. OK? So anything that is not 0 is true. 
Remember, the only thing that is false is zero. Anything but zero is true. Do we understand that? Okay. So now, so now, please answer. You get marks. I, I bribe you so you actually think an answer. And he cannot get another 2% until someone else does it. Okay? So it's, it opens for everyone else. So you can relax for a while. <laughs> okay, so this is how it's done. I can act, if I just do it like this, now I can uh, exchange the true and false. So I'm saying if number, I'm not mentioning zero or uh, true or false. When you do something like that, because C is looking at it as a condition, now it checks, is this zero? If it's true, it means it's false. It goes to the second one. Is it non-zero? That's a true. It's got to go to the first one. So a condition in C, you will see like this all the time. For now, don't worry. Don't do like this. I'm not going to do something like this. But I know you go read online. If you see inside the condition there is only one value, it means that value is checked not to be zero. If it's not zero, it's true, the first part happens. If it's zero, it's false, the second part happens. So if I run this program, obviously the outcome is going to be as follows. So it comes over here. Now if I enter um, 10 again, it gets in. Number is 10, and 10 is considered true, so it says number is positive and comes out, run it again, and this time if I enter zero, because the number is zero, it is considered false, so it's going to say it is zero, and done. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Now, nested values could be anywhere. So, nested statements could be anywhere. Like, for example, this program that I have written, let's say EFG, oh, I have to fix that, I have to fix that. Uh, wait. Save this, and I'm going to call it EFGHI, and I'm going to write anything but zero is true. Okay, please remember that. All right? So I'm going to say over here printf odd number printer. <laughs> okay? printer, okay? So this program is supposed to print odd numbers, okay? In here, I'm going to say how many? How many? Usually when you do a question mark, you don't want them to enter in front of it. So I'll do like this, and I'll go to the next line and get a prompt, okay? So how many? And scanf is actually... Why is it giving me an Oh, because I don't have that. All right? Now, if I say how many, it has to be a positive number, correct? If I say how many, you have to tell me five. You cannot say minus five. You can't do that, right? So now I can actually validate. In here, I can say, by writing an if statement over here, I'm going to say, if it is greater than zero, I don't want even to be zero in here. Okay? I'll bring this if statement at the bottom. So now zero is actually coming to the second part. The first part is positive, the second part is zero and negative. So I'm going to say that, uh, I'm going to say a positive value, please. In here, I'm going to say, so you want nothing. All right, like who says zero? So 
Now I can actually write over here the logic I want to actually print the, the negative, no, the, the, the odd numbers in. So right at the beginning of this thing, I'm going to say integer odd is equal to 1. The first one is 1, correct? Then I'm going to say do while r, yeah, do while is good, int counter is 0. And in here, I'm going to say uh, printf percent %d and put a space. And in here, I'm going to say odd. And I'm going to say odd plus equal to. And in here, I'm going to say while cnt is less than CNT is less than number, something like that. A yeah, loop, right? Or you want me to write a for? Let me write a for loop for it. For CNT being equal to zero and CNT being less than number and CNT plus plus. Now in here, I'm going to say printf percent d odd and odd you know <clears throat> odd is equal to odd plus 2 which in shorthanding is odd plus equal to that operator is in c only it's not a math operator a, so when you want to add 2 to something you say plus equal quickly if you want to reduce something by 2, you do minus equal, OK? So it's shorthanding. It's the same thing as that one. So now this thing actually validates. It's not just a dumb program, OK? So now in here, again, I have a nested thing. I know what the loops are. I know what an if statement is. In the true part of this if statement, I do whatever I need to do. And in the else part of the if statement, I do this one. But if I was a program, first I'm going to write, uh, run this, then I'm going to make it better. Yes? Odd values? Because odd number printer, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. I said, how many odd numbers do you want me to print? You want three? I'll, I'll print three. So if I run the program now, you can write it that way. It's just I wrote it this way. <laughs> OK, so it's going to say odd number printer. And it says, how many? I'm going to say I want three of them. Oh, sorry. How many? And I'm going to say three of them. So three is greater than zero, so I'm good. It comes in here, sets the CNT, prints odd, one. Three and five, I made a mistake, so let me fix it. We need to go to new line in here. And after that, I need to go to, new, uh, to a, a space over there. And I need to go to new line afterwards. So I'm going to say over here, put care, go to new line. OK, one more time. I, I told you, if you wrote a program, you're, no matter how small, first shot it works, run and buy a loader ticket because that's your lucky day, OK? It never happens. So now it comes over here, odd number how many. I'm going to get over here, say 3, and I hit Enter. So it, it's true. It comes in. It calculates it, prints the three numbers, and comes down, and done. It goes out, right? If I run it again, that ends. I run it again, this time over here. I'm going to say <clears throat> minus 10. And I hit Enter. It comes, it comes in here. It is false jumps over there. It's not 0. It's minus there. I'm going to say a positive value, please. And I'm going to say done, and I'll come out. Right? Are we OK with this? Any problem down to here? OK. So this is, we'll call it J validation. using if. <laughs>
Okay? But I wouldn't have written it like this, the way I taught you. If you were my student and you listened to what I taught you, when you're writing this code, you don't do it like this. What you do is like this. Immediately, you're going to say over here, print odds number. You would never write a ginormous thing inside an if statement and confuse the heck out of yourself. Immediately, imagine there is a function that prints the odds for you. And just write it over there. And write a prototype at the top. Now your task becomes two things. So in here, I'm going to say void print odds int number. And in here, I'm immediately writing a mockup for it. So void print odds int number. And I say printf percent, so printing, or I'm going to say number, and I'm going to put percent D, go to new line, and put a number. I'm not going to even print the odd numbers. I'm just writing a mockup so I can think about it later. So if I'm asking you to write something like this, give breaks to yourself. Don't clutter your brain by doing 50 things at the same time. Write the if statement, how am I supposed to write? As soon as you say, how am I supposed to write, immediately write a function and procrastinate. Procrastination while coding is gold. Okay. Now that I have done this, I'm going to run the program and test to see if it works. So it runs. I'm going to put a zero. As that's correct. One more time. 10. It says number 10. So the function is being called. Nice. Minus 10. Positive value, please. Done. Now I'm going to sit and think about my print odds function and think how am I supposed to write it. And uh, when I come up with the solution, then I'll just write the solution in here. Right? So instead of writing in an if statement, always procrastinate in your coding. It is good for your health, believe me. Okay? Especially when there's lots of work to be done. Okay? Now if I run it again, I can actually say 10 over here is going to print 10 odd numbers for me. Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Sold. Okay. Now the next thing is the if statement that you have seen that I have written over here. So in here I'm going to write EFGHIJK. Um, uh, think functions always. <laughs> OK? Now, the if statements that are like this, when you have if, else, then inside immediately you have an if and an else, you can simply put them together very quickly. It means the same thing. Like what I've done over here is perfectly good. But you can just remove this and do it like this. Yes. Inside the function? Okay, that, okay. Amazing question. Okay? We call it separating user interface from business logic. Your user interface must always have a separate thing. You should not mix it with that. The fact that a bad number is coming in is not a calculation of odd numbers, is it? It's not, right? Your business logic, let's put it this way. You think the user is sane, is not a crazy not person sitting over there. You write your function optimistically in there. Then you do your user interface, which means now the user is dumb. Let me see how can I fix this being stupid. 
and then you insert your function in there. So always user interface is separated from business logic. Amazing question. Thank you. All right. Um, we go down to this point. Are we okay? One, two. So this one. So this. So this if else statement that you see is a very normal one to choosing one out of many. It's a, it's a structure, actually. If, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else. When you have something like this, at least one of many will be chosen. If you want zero, zero, or many, not at least one, then you can write if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else, if, and do not write an else at the end. It means none of them may happen. So if you want one selection at least from many, you have if, else, if, else, if, else, if, else at the end. I'll, exp I'll give you an example in two seconds. So when I say 2 plus 2 lo is equal 4, and then now let's build a rocket and go to Mars, that's what I'm saying. Like, like when this is what it is. You s the concept of programming is very simple. The syntax of each part of logic that you have is very simple. It's just an if statement. Do I have water in there? Yes, drink it. No, say, give me water. We have that in our lives every single day. It makes it difficult when you have to insert decision after decision into the belly of other decisions. And that's when procrastination comes through, that I told you. Clear your mind. Do one part, and then all the little parts that you don't. You know functions. Functions, you know how to return something out of them. You know how to get something from them. So uh, how, to, how to pass stuff to them and how to uh, get stuff from them. So they are like machines that you can build, and you can just imagine one and then do it later. Just create a mock-up and do it later. Now, let's go for another example in here. JKL, I'm going to say else if instead of nested if dot C. So that's what it is essentially. So let's say I want to write a program that prints what is your letter grade when you get a mark. OK? I want to write a program that prints a letter grade when you get a mark. So when I give you 85, it gives you A. When I give you 95, it gives you A+. Plus. When I give you 65, so like that. So I'm not going to go into C, C plus. I'm going to go F and A, B, C, A, B, C, A plus, A, B, C, D, and F. This, these are the ones that we are going to create. So what am I going to do? So how do I write this program? And I'm writing it for you now um, um, to just show you how I think when I'm actually writing a program. So I'm going to wipe everything off over here and start from scratch as if I have nothing. So the objective is to receive a mark from user and convert it to letter grade and print it back. Are we good? Are we OK? One. Are we OK? Two. So. And then do it over and over for many marks. I just added some spice to it. So not only one, I want to have, like, I want to ask the user 50, like, uh, how many marks do you have? User is going to say 50 marks or four marks. 
So I'm going to add the first one and answer, second one and answer, the third. See, I just made it extremely complicated. This, what I'm going to write, is with the knowledge that we have learned down to this point, but this could be a project for the end of the semester for IPC 144. And we're going to do it together after these messages, which means <laughs> let's go for a break, drink something, and come back, freshen your brain, and then we're going to start. So our objective is to do something several times, correct? So the very first thing we're going to do, and I'm, again, I'm writing this application uh, to kind of demonstrate to you how it's done. So now you're at stage, you know uh, decision making, you know how it's done, you know uh, loops, how they are done, you know how the functions are done. So we have the knowledge to do simple stuff like this. And in the next few weeks, this is going to be our job. Just go through different logics. <clears throat> so the very first thing I need to do is to get the repetition, right, to see how many times I need to do this. Because I say I do it over and over, so I need to do something five times, six times, Repetition is the first thing I need to do. How many times I want to do this? So what I'm going to do in here is this. I'm going to say integer uh, CNT, okay? And I'm going to say CNT is equal to get repetition. What is get repetition? I don't know. I'm going to write it later. How does it work? It returns an integer. So int get repetition. For now, don't try to be efficient and go through what Emily was saying, they're trying to separate the thing and be absolutely right. You are at the beginning. Now, be messy. Write too many functions. It doesn't matter. Practice. Again, to break a rule, first you need to know what the rule is and understand it perfectly. So get used to functions, writing them over and over, and then you can go with different things. So get repetition is what I'm going to do. So that's that one. Uh, and in here, I'm going to say int get repetition. It, for now, I want to get an integer, right? Later on, I'm going to decide if I want to make it sophisticated or not. OK? So in here, I'm going to say printf how many times and I'm going to go to new line and get a value, right? So in here, with integer value, and I'm going to scan f. Percent %d, and address of value. So that's what I'm doing, and I'm going to say return value. So very simple. Because it was simple, I didn't bother procrastinating. I just wanted to get an integer and return it. Now, listen to me carefully. You know what's, what is, why is this thing beautiful? Reason is that if you want to, you can make that sophisticated by only going into get rep and make it, for example, foolproof. So if the user enters something negative, you show an error message, do stuff like that. For now, make it simple if you want to make it. So version 1.2. One will come up. Version 1.2, so you can make it better and better as it goes. Why? Because it's modular. It has parts and pieces that you can focus on. So I got the repetition. After I get the repetition, I need to do something several times. So I'll do it. As simple as that. So in here, I'm going to say 4, uh, and I need an integer i. Integer uh, i set to 0, i less than uh, cnt, and i plus plus. That is doing something several times, right? Correct? Any problem with this? Right? Then what I need to do, convert mark to grade, correct? That's what I need to do. So I'm going to call it mark to grade. I don't even know what I'm going to do yet. I don't know if it needs to return something. I don't know. I don't know if I need to pass something to it. I don't know. Because I don't know, I'm going to make a function that doesn't receive and return anything. If I want to change it, I'll do it later. 
but again, procrastinate. So in here, I have this, so I'm going to come right over here again. Void mark to grade, and then come down, write void mark to grade, and I'm going to say printf converting mark to grade, and I'll go to new line. Mockups. Keep writing mockups. Now I'm going to run my program, see if it works. I didn't do anything, right? But I can actually test it. It gives you a set, some kind of satisfaction. Yes, I did something. I went, so now I run this. I get error messages. Let me fix it. What does it say? Oh, mark to grade. It has an E at the end. There you go. How many times? Three. Converting mark to grade, converting mark to grade. I did convert mark to grade three times. Are we okay with this? Done. Next. Now, let's write converting mark to grade. Okay? Now, <clears throat> when I'm doing something like this, because this mark to grade thingy is a tough one to write, I'm going to actually separate it in another file. We know we can have several files as long as we have the uh, the prototype at the top, it works, right? So what I can do over here is actually create a new file and make my life easy. <clears throat> okay? I'm not going to do it now, but we can. So I could literally come over here and say, add <clears throat> new item. And usually I call it at the same name of the main function in there. So I'm going to call it mark to grade. Dot C. So I know it's the same thing. Actually, let me do it. <laughs> I'm going to just come over here and take this and put it in there. And in here I am using standard input output, so, so let me just actually copy everything from there. Right? So I just put it in another file. I compile and run it, make sure it still works. It still works. Four times, four times. Didn't do anything. Just brought the thing to another file to just, it's like you want to work on something, you clear your desk. Let me work in here. I don't want to have too many things in my hand. You don't want to even get cluttered with what you had before. You know that part works, forget about it. The part that is functional, forget about it. Focus your mind on the task in hand, which is converting mark to grade. So now in here I want to convert to mark to mark to grade. So what do I do to convert mark to grade? First I have to get a mark, right? So in here I'm going to say integer mark, and I'm going to say mark is equal to get mark. How to get mark? Easy. Integer get mark. Integer, get mark. Again, I write a simple version for it. Then I can make it sophisticated and make it foolproof and put validation in it. For now, I don't care. Okay? So in here, I'm simply going to say integer mark. Exact same thing as the other one. Scanf percent %d address of mark and return mark. Obviously, because it's a mark, it's a good idea to say uh, printf mark. You're getting a value of a mark, right? So it just shows you the mark and, and gets it. So I got the mark. Now I got the mark. What do I need to do? I need to convert this one to, and that where's at, if an else is going to come through. So I'm going to say if, <clears throat> again, I'm assuming that user is sane. <clears throat> okay? And do it, how, and, and we'll see what happens. So in here, I'm going to say if, okay? <clears throat> what is an F grade? Mark being greater or equal to zero. Mark being greater than or equal to zero. And mark being less than what? 50. Correct? Printf 
f. Correct? Now I want to do the other one. That's the else if. So I'm going to say else if that's not the one, if. What is the next one? What is uh, D? Mark, being greater than or equal to. Don't think that how the conditions are going to be, how can I make it most efficient? Don't. First make it work, then go back, take a look at your code. Can I make this better? Always do it worst way, quickest way possible. And then after a while, your handwriting becomes better. That's what I call it. So automatically, you're going to write the most efficient code. First, write it crappy. Make it work. Then, and that takes one third of a time. When it's work, now you're ready. I can submit my workshop on time. Let me think if I can make the work, the thing better. You put the good copy aside because you have Git. You commit it. It says first working version. You commit it to Git. You continue working. And if something goes wrong, you all can always can revert back to that last working the thing that you had. You can obviously revert to this one and it goes to that one. Okay. So now, the other one. If mark is greater than 50, greater or equal to 50, and mark is less than or equal to 60, that is what? Printf d, right? Oh, no, great dot equal, greater, uh, less than. That's a d, correct? And it continues, so I'm going to just copy that. Okay, I don't know how many, I'm just going to do it. So this one is 60, this one is going to be greater or equal to 60. And less than 70, correct? The other one is going to be greater than or equal to 70. And less than 80. This one is going to be greater than or equal to 80. And less than uh, 90. And the other one is going to be greater than or equal to 90. And less than 100. And I stop. This one is going to be D. So this is going to be A plus. This is going to be A. This is going to be B. And this is going to be C. <clears throat> Do we understand this? So this if else statement is zero. This if else statement is zero or one. Which means if somebody enters minus 50, what's going to get printed in here? The first condition is false, second, third, fourth. They are all false. Nothing's going to get printed, right? If the person enters 300, what's going to happen? Nothing's going to get printed. But if you want to add an error message, you can do it. How? By just adding an else. It means if none of them happened, if none of them happened, then printf, uh, Percent D is not a valid mark and go to new line. Yes. And mark, right? Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I made a mistake. I told myself. Less than or equal, less than or equal, less, and I forgot. <laughs> that doesn't deserve 2%. <laughs> that means attention. <laughs> yeah. Where? Oh. That's one of the benefits of copying and pasting. You copy and paste your error over and over. Pritnuf, it kind of sounds German. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Are we OK? Thank you. OK, so and I think we're done. So one of the good things about doing functional stuff, yes? Oh. Let's, let's, uh, 
They are absolutely different. No, they are both marks. Why you should use the different names? What confusion? Tell me what is confusion here. If I have two people over here named Joe, you got to get confused? No, because one Joe is from one family, the other Joe is from another family. The mark inside get mark is a variable inside mark. And the mark inside mark to grade is a variable in mark to grade. That was a beautiful question. Remember, this is what we call scope. Each variable has a meaning inside its scope and dies at the end of its scope, which means even if you have an if statement, if, like for example, where do I? If I'm crazy enough to over here create integer x, that x is only alive at line 14 and 15. It dies at line 16 because it's within that scope, that open and close curly bracket. Got it? That's the rule. That's how it happens. So any variable that gets created in a scope dies at the end, and you have to get used to it. Try not to name them differently. Trust me, you're going to run out of name. And one of those names are going to be not meaningful. You're going to call one of them MRK, call the other one underline mark. That's awful. Name them all mark. And just understand that each mark within its own scope has its own identity. And it belongs to that scope. OK? And another thing that you ask that question, it is too much to tell you now. I'm not going to tell you now. Forget it. OK? So th that's the thing. So it is in that scope. Now, we are ready to test to see if it actually works or not. So I'm going to run the program. How many? I'm going to say three. Enter a mark. I'm going to put uh, 67. C mark. So that's wrong. Printout is not correct. It didn't work properly. Let me just fix it. So when I'm printing C, when it gets the mark, it's going to put a space and put a new line. Space, new, or it goes to new line, so we don't need a space. A new line, or see, I'm, see, I, I, I keep putting new lines over here. You see that? Then I see, wait a minute, I have to put new line, new line, new line, new line, new line, and a new line over here. Why do I do that? I'm just going to put one new line at the end of everything. Right? I wanted to put new line in every single printout, and I said, that's just a waste of time. It's just one of those things are going to happen, right? So now I run the program again. We'll walk through it in a second. Three times. Mark, I'm going to put 67. That's a C. Now I'm going to put 89. That's an A. I put 100. That's an A+. Plus. Run it again. I put uh, minus 10. Nothing happened. When I put minus 10, nothing happened. Let me see why. You have to speak out loud. No, uh, let's walk through it. Because I don't know what I did wrong. Let's walk through it. So it's got to come over here. Oh, it, it's, oh, because I put get repetition. Oh, I put the thing for repetition, didn't I? because I didn't do the validation yet. That's fine, I'll do it later. So that's something I'm going to fix later. Not good testing. How many? I'm going to put three. Now I'm going to put minus 10. It's not a valid mark, 120, not a valid mark. And 35, that's an F, right? Now let's fix that one. So we are OK down to this point? Oh, let's walk through it and see what happens. So in here, I'm coming over here. I'm getting the repetition. We know how it's that. So I'm going to put over here three. Hit enter, so it knows what the repetition is. It comes in here. I want to go inside the function. I'm pressing F11. It goes inside the fun function, receives a mark. I know exactly how it works, just the scanf. So for that one, I'm going to put over here, say, uh, 78, and I hit enter. When I s put 78, this condition becomes false, right? And the next condition is false. 
and the next condition is false, and this condition is true. It's going to go inside, print the B. But as soon as it prints it, everything else becomes else. Therefore, none of those will happen, and it jumps to the end and goes to new line. OK? So I'm going to put a stop sign over here and then run it one more time. It comes in here, another get mark. Now in here, I'm going to put minus 10. Because it's minus 10, none of the conditions will happen. So false, 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 false. Therefore, the last one that has no condition will happen, which is it's not a valid thing. Are we OK? And this time, I'm going to put, say, uh, uh, 40. The first one becomes correct and prints F, and uh, everything else is now else. Therefore, it skips everything else and jumps to the end, and it's done. Are we okay down to this point? Are we okay? Are we okay? All right. So, the lecture is over down to this point, okay? But I want to give you something that is a little challenging. You have the knowledge for all of it, but I want you to go home and walk through it. I'm going to write you one function. And that one function is a foolproof integer entry, too rich for your blood. It's kind of complicated. It has lots of little things from every, anything that we taught right down to this point, plus one additional thing. I'm going to put it separate and use it over here so you can use my code if you want. doesn't matter because it's mine. You don't need to cite it. But uh, uh, walk through it on paper and on computer and learn it, OK? So I want to write a program that receives an integer, foolproof integer. How do I do it? To make sure that user doesn't enter garbage stuff. How does it work? Let me come in here and act actually do it over here. So in this get thingy over here, I'm going to write get int. So it's li literally I want to receive one integer. And don't let the user go until the integer that is received is done correctly. OK? And show the messages and tell them that you did wrong. Are we OK with this? All right, so that's our objective, to write something that is foolproof. The code is essentially it starts like that one. So in here, it starts the exact same thing. So that's get int, exactly the same. But I'm not going to say how many times or enter something, because getting integer is so, so many different varieties that there is, it is absolutely impossible to actually uh, know what the user is going to ask. So I'm going to let the prompt to be done using uh, a printf some outside of the bank. So I am getting a value. Yes. OK. If you use the keyword break or continue in any of your programs from now till the time that you are in any of my classes, your assignment is immediately rejected. Any use of break or continue or go to, these come from 60 years ago, and they were abandoned 20, 30 years ago. 40 years ago. That's the era of structured programming. That as old as C. C came to abandon that. What you just said creates what we call spaghetti code. The logic becomes like a spaghetti. You have to follow the threads to see what goes where. Never use go to, continue, or break. You're allowed to use break statement only in one structure called a switch. It's a decision making like if, 
which I'm not going to teach you because you can do it with if for now. Practice, I'll, I'll teach you that later. Break is only allowed to be used in, in uh, a switch statement, but I'm going to use your logic in a better way. How? I'll explain. So you will see it is exactly what you said. Have in a while loop a one so it keeps going and we break the while loop if everything is good. That's what you said, right? So this is what I'm going to do. So it is exactly what you told me but in a structured way. What do I do? I'm going to say int done is equal to zero. What is zero? False, correct? Zero is false. And I'm going to make it English. So right at the beginning in here, I'm going to say, while not done, keep going, correct? All I need to do is set the done to one, and the while is going to break. And I don't have any break statement in here. Does that make sense? OK. So this is the proper way of what you just mentioned. So now in here, I'm going to say while not done, and I'm going to get this value and put it over here. All right? First thing I need to do in here to see if user was sane and actually entered an integer. We just learned scanf does that for us. If scanf returns 1, it means an integer was read successfully, correct? Correct? And if it doesn't, if it returns anything but 1, it means it couldn't read the integer. So all I need to do is to say if scanf is equal is should we be pessimistic or optimistic? I'm going to say equal to 1. So if scanf is equal to 1, you can't say just scanf. It has to be 1. If it's minus 1 is true too, remember that. Minus 1 is non-zero. Anything but 0 is true. You have to say if scanf returns 1, I'm good. So in here it means great success. OK? I got it, right? Otherwise, user entered non-integer. Correct? Is that, are we okay with this? Are we okay with this, everyone? All right. This is the part that I told you it is, uh, it is um, complicated that I, ha that I have to explain it to you, so what, and I'm going to explain it to you. Let me see how can I explain it to you. I'm trying to look for a metaphor for this. It's a very simple concept. <clears throat> So first, we have to understand what is the meaning of buffer. Anybody knows what buffer is when I say buffer? No? Night? Good. Oh, no problem. OK. No, no, no. Buffer means literally a stack of things. Like the plates that you have in the kitchen are plates that you buffered. In case you want one, you can pick one. It's, they're all sitting over there. And you can pick another plate. There is still some more, correct? And you have to keep going until it's done. And then you don't have any plates in there, correct? It's as if, for example, I have series of pops over here, some drinks. Let's say I have some series of, like, 10 Pepsis over here. One by one, you're coming. I'll give the first Pepsi to the first person next person, and, and I keep doing that. So I have some Pepsis in the buffer. As soon as, let's say I have five Pepsis over here and seven people over here. So the lineup comes, the first person comes, I give the first Pepsi, the first person goes away. The second, third, fourth, and fifth, and the sixth person is now going to wait. <whistles> because I don't have any Pepsi, and he's supposed to get the Pepsi, right? He's going to wait until I go get more Pepsi. 
Otherwise, he's going to stay over there forever. So essentially, my lineup of people will be hanged. It is hung over there, and it cannot move. It's stuck. It's like traffic. It can't go through. The right is red. It cannot. I have to get more Pepsi and give it to them and keep going. Do we understand this concept? Keyboard works like that. Every single thing that you're hitting is creating lineups of character in your keyboard. It keeps going. They're all lined up. So you put A, B, C, D. A is at the head of the line. B is next. C is next. And they create a huge lineup. When you do a scanf, it's like scanf taking up characters like Pepsi's and give it to your program as it goes through. Got it? We are okay down to this point? All right. Now, if I have 10 people in lineup and scanf receives three things, seven of them will remain in lineup, right? If I want to serve new thing now, now I'm going to give Cokes, and these people don't want Cokes, they all want Pepsis. I have to tell them, go, 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 go. Everybody out of the lineup, now people for Coke come over here. So I, can, I have to empty the lineup because I only pick three of them. Do we understand this? Okay, let's write the code now. So <clears throat> the program runs, it comes to scanf, and it gets the value. The user wants to enter 50, but instead it, the user types F-I-F-T-Y. -F it actually writes 50. OK? So what happens? Scanf looks at it. It wants a digit, right? It's character. It's not digit. What's going to say? It's going to say, I return 0. I couldn't read anything. Where are those keys are in now? In your keyboard. So if your scanf wants to read again, there is no 50. It's going to keep going. I'll, I'll demonstrate. So <clears throat> let's say come over here. So in here, I'm just going to print an error message. Say, say printf invalid integer. Try again. OK, so I'm just asking them to, re to get again. And in here, I'm going to say done is true. Correct? Let's run the program. So, <clears throat> so let's say in this get repetition, instead of scanf over here, I want to do get int. So they actually enter proper integers. So in here, I'm going to say value <coughs> is equal. Actually, you can do that later. I'm going to put it in a separate file. Save. So this one is going to be uh, lm else if in action dot c. So that's that one. And I'm going to write a new one over here. Just for get in, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have anything in here like mark and schmark and stuff. I want to focus only on this. So in here, I'm gonna say printf. Enter an integer. And I'm gonna say uh, int num. And I'm gonna say num is equal to get int. It's set to is set to get int. And I'm going to say printf. Uh, you entered percent %d. And I'm going to go to new line. And I'm going to put over here num. OK, so that's my program. And the time is 24. I'm just going to show you what's wrong with it. And the next time, we'll continue. So <clears throat> if I run the program, you will see that it comes to get int, and it tries to get an integer, correct? If I put the value 20 over here and I hit Enter, because it's an integer, it actually done will be true, right? 
Everything is good. No error message is going to get printed. Goes up over there. Not true is false. Comes out. Returns the value of 20. And I'm going to get you entered 20. Right? This is good news. Now let's go for a bad one. So we'll come in here. Now we're going to come to get int. And in here, it's going to try to get something. Instead of tw 20, I'm going to put 20. And I hit enter. What happens? Scanf returns zero because it couldn't read any value, correct? Now it goes back up. Done is not one. Scanf wants to read again. What's in a keyboard? 20. It didn't go anywhere. It's still sitting there. So it tries to read it again. Again fails. And it fails. And it fa oh. <clears throat> Ugh. So in, if I put over here 20, this is what happens. It's an endless loop. Tw Scanf keeps trying to read it, but in my keyboard I have 20. That's what you're going to get. So what do you do when you go to washroom? You flush. That's what we do over here. We flush the keyboard. How do you flush the keyboard? What is the single thing that you can always read no matter what? Character, right? Anything is a character, correct? Anything is a character. So I can simply write a function called flush key. And in this flush key of mine, I don't return anything. I just keep getting characters. I'm going to say character ch. And I'm going to say while. And I'm going to put this one ch as I'm going to put something x in it. And I'm going to say while ch is not equal backslash n, because after entering anything, you hit the enter, correct? So always the data ends at enter key, correct? In here, I'm going to say get char. And I'm going to put it in ch. So it's going to keep reading all the characters until it hits the backslash n. So if that's the case, in here I have to say flush key. So now, if the scanf cannot read it, it goes over there, throws everything away from keyboard. And then, now we have a fresh keyboard, Scanf can try and read again. See? When I run the program, just take a look very quick. Build error seriously. Unresolved yada yada. Get int. What is it? What? Oh. Capital K. Capital K. Okay. Sorry. Quick, 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 quick. OK, now in here, I'm going to put 10 instead of 10. I hit Enter. It comes down over here, correct? It goes to flush key. CH is X. It gets one character. That's T. Gets another one. That's E. Get another one. That's E. N gets another one. That's new line. It's new line. It stops and comes out. Keyboard's clean. Now it goes back in. Scanf can actually try again. Now I can put over here 10, and actually 10 comes out. So now this becomes a foolproof, not completely foolproof yet. So in here, if I put garbage, it says invalid. If I put 20, it says you entered 20. It's not still foolproof. Why? Because if I enter this and I put 10 is the number, <laughs> then it will accept it. I have to fix that the next time. Or you do it at home. Try to find out how can you detect if the user did not finish the integer number with an enter key. OK? And we're done. I'll put this. That's your challenge for the next time. And I'm not going to even name it. It's just PRG. And in here, I'm going to say, write a full proof integer entry. Complete it and get bonus marks. Are we good? Have a beautiful day.